<laughs> First of all, uh, it, it, I, 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 it, a hard thing to talk about, but a good thing to talk about is to acknowledge the contribution that Russ Krings has made to the entire labor movement in the state of Wisconsin. So please give him a round of applause. Thank you. guy is an honest to goodness working man in his heart. He fights. He stands up for the machinist. He stands up for all workers. Every time we've had an issue and every time we've had a challenge, and yes, in Wisconsin, the labor movement rises to those challenges and steps into those challenges and we fight, right? Right! 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 right. right. Damn right. And right there in the front of it, right there always supporting us has been Brother Russ Creams, and I want to acknowledge that. Um, it's with a heavy heart that, you know, this is your swan song, whatever you call it. I don't know what the hell they call it. So I should be like Ricky and just be quiet or just <laughs> spoke, or I can't recall. <laughs> Anyways, um, so Scott Walker. Uh, you know, there's a lot of speculation, first of all, about what the hell happened to the guy. Flying high in July, down down this month, uh, went from you know being a leader to zero percent. Did he mis uh, mishandle his finances? Uh, which part of the misspeaking was it? The wall in Canada, or three sides of every issue, or or, or what exactly was the thing that broke the back and sent them down? Was it the fact that he has crazy eyes, which I had heard that one before, but I like that. He has crazy eyes, and they, you know he got killed at the debates. You know I don't know exactly what the answer is. I think it's a part, part, partial of all of that, but I don't think it's real complicated. I think when you wake up in the morning and you're pulling at zero, um, and I, I like that Walker at zero. It kind of goes together. But I think it doesn't get real complicated about what kind of decisions you make. So he did cut. He did cut it, and he came back to Wisconsin now, and he said, you know, he's here because he's going to leave by quitting, which is interesting. Uh, and he's asking others to follow him by quitting. Um, so I, I, you know, that whole message is still very confusing that he has because I don't know how you lead by quitting because clearly the labor movement in Wisconsin. We're leading, and we're not quitting no matter what we're up against, right? Right. right? And I wish I could sit here and tell you, here's what to expect from Scott Walker and Boos and Fitzgerald and what's going to happen. I mean, are they smelling blood? Are they like sharks in the water? Are they going to start fighting among each other? Are they going to veer to the right, veer more modern? I don't think we know for sure. I don't think anybody knows for sure, and I think that that's the honest answer. But we do know some things. We do know that they've thrown everything almost imaginable <coughs> at us as, as a movement, right? You've seen Act 10. They've attacked public employees, their right to bargain, their wages, you know, the whole shot. They've come at the private sector even though they said they weren't going to, and they put in right to work. They've gone after building trades by trying to repeal prevailing wage. They're doing everything they can to reduce wages for workers, to remove rights from people in their community. <laughs> But yet, through it all, we've come together, and we do come together, and we're working. We turned out at this past election. We made sure that, you know, for better or worse, Obama got reelected. We made sure that Tommy Baldwin got put into the Senate. We made sure that our friends in Congress got reelected that we needed to in the state of Wisconsin. We're coming together. We continue to fight, and we know we've got challenges coming up in 16. No matter who's the president, we know we've got a winner and a champion and a chance to elect Russ Feingold back to the Senate. And that's a good opportunity, and that's a fight worth having, right? Right. At least, you know, I think it is. And with that, let's try to change some of this stuff in the state house. So the attacks have come. They're throwing everything at us. And through it all, we're moving forward. We're moving ahead. I like to talk about the Wisconsin labor movement as a movement that's in transition. Because, you know, we used to be a very 
service oriented organization. We'd make sure we negotiate contracts, we'd make sure we'd represent people in the grievance procedure, and we'd do the very best we could to take care of our members. And that's why they paid dues. Well, now with the changes, that's not enough. Now we have to do those things, and we have to talk to our members, we have to do the internal organizing, we have to do the transition and the things we need to do to make sure that they understand why it's an advantage to be in a union, that they understand that it's up to them to come together, and we know we have to build strong locals to have a voice for those workers in the workplace and in those communities, and we have to do the internal organizing and member education so that they understand what these attacks are about and what the future of the movement is about, and that they are a part of that future. That's what we're doing. And since they've passed right to work and some contracts have expired, I've been checking with locals about what kind of people are you know, getting out of the union. Where are we with this thing? And I'm happy to say that you know, as a movement, we started early with the right to work readiness in Wisconsin. And we started doing the kind of education and internal organizing that I know so many of you are involved in. And the results have shown the hard work is paying off. The, the, the people that have left the union is very, very small because of the work and the internal organizing stuff that you're doing. You're, you're what's building the, the strong union movement here. You're the center of it. You're the core of it. The members, the stewards, the locals, it's the backbone that moves it. But we're also trying to move, a, you know, we're also trying to restructure our movement so we're in a better position regionally and in our communities to provide a voice for workers in the community. So we're working on these regional level efforts. And we know we have to restructure, we know we have to transition because we know that there's unlimited dollars from the Cokes and others, corporations, WFC, what have you. They've changed the law so they can spend unlimited dollars to try, try to take your voice away. They've done it through Citizens United. So we have to, we can't give up. We have to step into this. We have to fight, but we have to reposition ourselves. So we've started these things called regional uh, solidarity roundtables. And we're focusing on three core issues. And the first and one of the most important things is the issue of solidarity. Because we all talk about solidarity. We all sing about solidarity. <coughs> but solidarity is something you've got to work towards. Solidarity means sitting down in a community and talking to people from other unions and understanding what kind of issues and problems they have. So that we understand that at the end of the day it's about wages, it's about benefits, it's about our families. It's about building a stronger community. And we all share in that. And we all need to have the right to collectively bargain. You know, we feel it's a right. Our governor says it's an expensive entitlement. Obviously, he doesn't understand the Constitution, the freedom of speech, the right to free assembly, because that's what unions are. So it's about America. When they talk this other shit, it's un-American, and they're just trying to spin things against us. But let's, you know, we're trying to build a sense of solidarity and camaraderie. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not going to disagree on an endorsement, or we're not going to disagree over who should represent what work, because what work you know, jurisdiction or things like that, because those sorts of arguments have always been there and they'll always be there. But it means that we can come together for the bigger picture and the bigger fight. And that's what we're trying to provide, myself, Stephanie, Russ, and so many others, is to provide that area, that room, for everyone to come together. The second important goal we're working on is about accountability. Because we know we don't have the money to walk around Washington and Madison. Um, we know that we've got to get engaged and, and, and keep people accountable by writing big checks like our, like our business opponents do or their interests do. So when they come home to their districts, we have to hold them accountable for their votes on various issues. And we're going to have to do it by meeting them in their neighborhoods, by inviting them into meetings, by having town hall meetings, by having meet and greets, or whatever, whatever system works best for people in those communities. But we've got to facilitate that sort of dialogue between elected officials and members to talk about our issues face to face. We've got to get more engaged in local people. How many union members, good union members, did not know who was on a school board, 
did not know who was on the county board, did not know who was at the city council, but yet those bodies are making a lot of decisions that affect wages, that affect working people's lives. So we're working hard to start a, a very sincere effort to start lobbying and engaging those local elected officials. And you know, we're going to figure out who's friends and who's Walker friends and who, you know, who, those that we've got to work on, but we'll end up with strategic targets for spring elections to start making those local boards be more labor friendly because decisions are made there. And while we're doing that, the Koch brother funded Americans for Prosperity are opening Wisconsin, they're opening offices in Wisconsin in various communities because they're going to be working to do the same thing. Only they have millions of dollars, so they're going to be hiring staff people to go out and do this stuff, to do door-to-door -door canvassing. Some of you may already have gotten some of their, their stuff delivered to your doorstep. We're going to have to rely on you and co-workers and members, and we have to build a volunteer network across the state because it's not just going to happen just by paying union dues anymore. It's not going to happen by just you know, going to work and, and, and complaining. It's going to happen because we have to do what our forefathers did. We're going to have to go back to our work sites and talk to people about being volunteers, about turning out for events, about doing the hard work at an election time. Because if we don't do that, the other side is going to have the money, the other side is going to have the boots on the ground, and we're going to continue to get our ass kicked. So those are the challenges that we're facing. And those are hard things because it makes us all a little bit uncomfortable. But I'm here to tell you, if we don't do that, we're done for. We've got to do this. We've got to step forward. We've got to get active. We've got to get engaged. And we've got to bring our members along with us. So we're working to educate people as much as we can through the every member and organizer. I know some of you have gone through that training. We're going to continue these trainings. We're going to change the curriculum. We're now going to tra be transitioning the curriculum into talking about the economy, what this whole thing around wages is all about, so people understand what it is that's at stake, that they understand what the fight is about. Because a well-educated union membership is the first step towards a mobilized, an active and effective membership, and that's what we need to have. So that, and working on working with you all to try to get more volunteers and get them trained. And in addition to that, you know, leaders have been coming together as a manufacturing sector and trying to raise to the challenge of how do we organize internally, what are best practices, how do we learn from each other, and we've been developing a jobs program. Because at the end of the day, we know that at the center of a good, strong labor movement is what? It's our member. And our members expect us to do a number of things. They expect us to help them, educate them, so that they can be a voice in the workplace and in the community. But the members also want us to work to help figure out how they can have what? Job security and advancement in the workplace. So we're going to be working with WRTP and other organizations to find resources so that it's the labor movement that's working, reaching out to our members to provide that career ladder, to job security, to advancement, to go along with these other things that we're trying to do. So those are some of the substantive things that we're doing as, a tran as we're going through transition to put a new structure, a new framework in place, to provide a voice for workers into the future. But brothers and sisters, the other thing, the bottom line is, is this, is that we've got to make sure, or we've got to create a movement. And you know, movements are what? Movements are emotion. It's about being emotion and feeling passionate about the fact that you've got to represent workers, about what's happening to them in the workplace, about workplace justice, about the inequality in wages. If you can look at that, and if you can see workers being mistreated, if you can see women being harassed, if you can see people being turned away when they shouldn't be, if that doesn't make you mad, if you don't feel something boil up in your chest, then you're in the wrong movement. Because that's why we're in this movement, is to represent people and to make a better life for them and their families. Right? That's why we're here. Right? That's about emotion. So we can't just talk the talk, we've got to walk the walk. 
So it's about emotion. It's about recognizing that now is the time to rebuild and come together. Now is the time to push forward with an agenda of organizing a togetherness inside our locals as a movement across regions. Now is the time to harness the strength of solidarity to reach out to our communities, to our neighbors, friends, family, and fellow co-workers and talk union. If we're afraid to talk union, who the hell is going to talk union for us? We're union. We should be proud of being union. We should never back down on who we are. We're union families, and we're proud of it. Right? Right. right. Every case to show campaign on bashing unions, and it failed. The anti-union message never resonated around this country. It never connected. It never gained traction. In fact, Walker up the ante. He doubled down on the plans to attack unions, and the next poll showed him down the tubes at zero percent. That is not just coincidence. The American people want unions to bring balance to our economy. People understand that unions create a strong middle class, fight for jobs and economic security for all workers. People around the country, people around the state, the polls are showing the tide is turning. In fact, the public perception of unions is rebounding. It's growing in our polls. The latest Gallup poll shows that six in every 10 or 60% of people now support unions. That's a turnaround here. That's a turnaround since we've started the fight. And it's because we've been more visible. It's because we've stood up for our rights in these communities. So we've been through a lot since Scott Walker took office. And yeah, we've taken some hits, but the labor movement is born out of struggle and strife. Nothing has ever come easy. We've had to fight the powers to be for every little bit of worker protection and freedom. We've always had to speak up to join together for our rights. We've had to seize, we have to seize on this opportunity, grow this energy and enthusiasm, continue to educate and motivate, mobilize and organize. Now is the time to not get weary, to not give up. It's the time for the economy to work for all working families. Now is the time to rise up, to unite, to join together as one voice, one union movement, united and together for our rights on the job, for the freedom to collectively bargain, for the ability to have good jobs that help us sustain our families. We fight for a brighter day, a better tomorrow, not for ourselves, but for our children, our nieces and nephews, our their children and our grandchildren, for our entire communities, so that we can have a fairer, more just world. That is our calling and that is on our shoulder. We do that so that every working person can come home safe at the end of the workday with a decent wage in their pocket, a wage that puts food on the table and keeps the lights on. We fight to end discrimination and injustices in the workplace. We fight to counter, we fight to counter the power of corporate greed. We will work together in solidarity for a better tomorrow, for a future. Together in solidarity, we move forward. Together in solidarity, we build a better Wisconsin, a better America, and a better future for all those who labor. Right? Right. Thank you in solidarity.